Good morning, friends. It's Saturday morning. It's Carrie from Stretch Chi. I hope you guys are well. Um, today, I decided to go back to cards. It's been a rough week for me. And, um, you know, if you've been watching any other classes, like I actually cried in class yesterday. <laughs> I'm all right today. Um, I think we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a tough week. It's been an emotional week, I think, for a lot of people. Um, anyone who's an empath knows that emotions are high right now, and it's hard taking on that um, that energy. Um, also, like, you know, just we're in almost three months into lockdown. That's like, you know. So anyway, we're doing reverse pigeon today, which is kind of a fun one. I actually have a lot of stretches that work within this group. We're not gonna do all of them, of course, but what we'll do is work from a very basic position into a more complicated position so that you can do this pigeon pose, really get your glutes activated. That's what today is gonna to be all about, glute activation. So let's get our butts working. Yes, butts. That's, <laughs> that's what today's all about. Today is all about butts, yay. All right, so, here we go. If it's your first time to my channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, this class should actually be relatively simple. Hopefully you can figure it out, but resistance stretching is a different beast than if you're used to doing normal stretches. So if you find that you're a little lost in this class, just go to my channel. You could like, go down below and like, click on my name and there's tons of videos, instructional videos, problem solving videos. There's a whole playlist called Stretching for the Inflexible. That's a really great place to start. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click that little button in the corner because uh, I really appreciate it. I actually was on the uh, uh, Facebook Messenger phone call with my mom yesterday because it's the only way she knows how to use it. Um, <laughs> and I was telling her about the <laughs> and I was telling her about the channel, and she was like, "How do I find it?" So she looked up my YouTube channel couldn't figure it all out. And then when I told her, I was like, hey mom, subscribe, it's good. Like the more subscribers I have, the better it is for the channel to get, you know, to be seen, to get more impressions. And she was like, do I have to pay for this? It's a subscription, do I have to pay for it? No, I wanna clear that up for you guys. Anybody who's like, I don't wanna subscribe, I don't wanna pay anything. All a subscription is, is like you liking your friend on Facebook or like following someone on Instagram. That's all it is. So in your YouTube, world like on your screen you have a subscriptions folder and it's basically like your news feed on any other social media so it'll show everybody that you subscribe to and anything that they're posting you can also set notifications there's a little bell icon next to the subscription button and that um it's after you subscribe um, that will actually set it so that you get a reminder like you'll get a little ding on your phone or you'll get an email that says like hey carrie posted a new video and then you won't miss any of my videos, right? But that's what subscribing is. I just wanna clear that up because my mom really thought she was gonna have to pay something. No, YouTube is free. These shows, these videos are free for you. This is like, you don't have to pay anything unless you want to. And if you want to, there's a little description, a little link in the description box below where you can make a contribution if you feel like supporting the channel. And that's super cool. All right, my friends, that's it. If you're new to this method, Move, resist, don't do anything that hurts. You got it? Okay, so the pose of the day is called reverse pigeon. So let's go ahead and try it out. See how your body feels. See if you can gather information about this, how your body is reacting to this position, and then we're gonna work to change that, okay? So what you wanna do first is just lay on your back. Bring your right leg on top of your left leg so that you're Oh my gosh, there's a spider on the ceiling. If that spider drops down, this is gonna, it might be kind of funny. So I'll be all right. Okay, so the right leg on top of the left leg here, then you're gonna reach through and grab behind your left leg with both hands. Now in a yoga class, reverse pigeon, you grab your leg on the front and your shin. But we wanna actually be able to move a bit. So let's take a, a wider stance, like from behind your leg here. Or you could even take a rope and wrap it around your legs so that you extend a little bit more even. Push out for strength and then pull in for your stretch. And as you pull in for this stretch, take your time and just take note of what you feel. 
So like I feel stretch right here. It's not a lot. It's kind of like in the joint. So that tells me that maybe I'm not getting as much stretch as I want. Um, I'm also feeling something happening like here. It feels more like it's in my quad than in the outside. So that's very interesting. Um, I'm also very preoccupied with the fact that my bum doesn't hit the floor. So there's something going on with my neck where I don't feel like having my head up feels good. That feels fatigued. I want to put my head down, but my hair is in the way. So those are just interesting things to take note of. Now, the reason why I want to make sure you take note of these things is because we actually are going to change the way that your body responds to this positioning, okay? So if you want, grab a pad of paper and write down some notes or write it in the chat. Let me know what you feel. Let me know what you think. Now, the chat is here. The reason why class is live is so that you guys can actually interact with me during class. Tell me what's going on in your body so that we can work to problem solve, okay? That means that you actually have to interact, right? <laughs> so if you want that, it's you can totally get individualized attention in this class just by putting information into the chat. If you're watching this on your television, just sign in on your phone. Also, just sign in on both devices, and then you can have your phone there so you can type something in real quick without disrupting the screen, okay? Oh my gosh, I lost the spider. Where did it go? Oh, jeez, Louise. Oh, I found it, okay. <laughs> Bring your left leg on top of your right leg now. Reach through and grab your right leg with both hands. And then push out for strength and in for your stretch. And you just go back and forth. And then take note of this one too, what do you feel? And again, to me, I do feel something in my glute on this side, but it kind of feels um, metally. Does that make sense? It's a funny thing. Like you, whatever word comes to your head, write it down because it means something. Oh my gosh. I wonder if this just spider jumps. I don't think it would jump on me. If it jumps on me, that might be way more embarrassing than how when I cried in class yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So as I said, this stretch for me feels like metal. Now, the only way that I can describe that to you is like that feeling when you bite on a fork, it feels like that. It's like, I feel it in my teeth. Does that make sense? It's weird. It's a, a, but it's uncomfortable. So that tells me, Hey, there's something we need to work on here. That means that I should stop doing that stretch, right? Now that's a paradigm shift for a lot of people, but just stick with me. Okay. Now we're going to move on into a stretch for your inner thighs because it balances what we just worked on. We have our agonist muscle group and our antagonist muscles. So we're gonna work back and forth in teams, okay? So go ahead and lay on your back. Oh boy. Bring your feet up towards the ceiling and grab your knees on the inside. Squeeze your legs together and your arms are gonna to try to open up. So you just use your arms to bring you into this wide leg split and your feet pull in to give you the strength training. So you just go back and forth. That spider is totally, I'm going to shut up about the spider. <laughs> I am a little preoccupied. I did not like spiders, you guys. Do not like them. I suppose it's okay as long as it stays on the ceiling. You should feel this in your inner thighs, right? And you can take notes too. Write down in your little book what you feel if it feels strange or bad to you. But if it feels good, you could just say, hey, that's a good stretch. This would be your inner thighs. We call them the adductors, A-D-D, adductors. So pull in for strength and open up for stretch. And see if you can find this stretch in a good way for you. If it doesn't feel good, then write it down and skip it, okay? And tell me in the chat, it's important that you guys tell me in the chat because I will make sure to come back to that stretch if any of you guys are having problems with it. But if you're not having problems with it, I will probably not go back to it for the sake of time. So let me know, okay? We'll work through. All right. Now let's go to our hip flexors. Yes, hip flexor lunge. Let's come up into a, okay, it's way over there now. I'm good. <laughs> oh boy. All right. 
Bring your right leg in the front, your left leg behind, we're up in a lunge. You're gonna try to pull your right leg back like you're trying to kick yourself in the butt. Your left leg here is gonna try to kick forward like you're trying to bring your knee up to your chest. So it's this like scissoring forward and back motion this way. So my front leg is gonna pull me into the lunge. My back leg is fighting. I'm gonna keep my torso up so that I can get this stretch in the front of my hip here. Then I'm gonna pull back for strength. And then I just pull back and forth. <laughs> I, you know, the way that this week has gone, it's been a little overwhelming, which is kind of ridiculous. But having a spider on the ceiling, my goodness. It's like the end of the, the top of the cake, right? What do they call that? You know what I mean. I don't know. I might take a vacation next week, guys. <laughs> I'll still put up videos for you, but if I don't do live videos, don't be surprised. I might need some time. It's, um, it took me like 10 minutes to figure out how to put the shirt on today. I'm not lying. I had to take it off and put it back on like four times because it like, it got all tangled up. These shirts, they're cute, but who decided this was a great idea to have everything like twisting and, you know, everything gets on. You guys, if you have a shirt like this, you know, it's really, they're really frustrating. It was humorous. Okay, the other side. The left leg in the front, the right leg behind. I'm actually, my knee is bruised. So I'm, oh no, I'm up here. I'm gonna put a towel under my knee for this one. And then you're gonna pull in opposite directions again. So the front leg is pulling in, the back leg's trying to kick forward. Look, I'm trying to slide the towel forward. And then I just pull with my back leg, or with both legs actually. The front leg wins. Sit up tall to feel the stretch in your hip flexor. And back for strength. And you just go back and forth. Find the stretch in the front of your hip. And back. You just go back and forth. Okay, now this spider is closer to you guys than it is to me. So you can take on all that fear. <laughs> all the spider fear. I think there's actually like good omens about spiders. I'll have to check that out. Maybe a spider is a good thing. I know they eat bugs. They don't eat other spiders. And any spider that eats other spiders is not a spider that I want in my house. Okay. <laughs> Just draw the line at, oh no, it's coming back this way. All right, so you should be feeling this nice stretch in the front of your hip, right? We've got that. Now again, if it doesn't feel good to you, write it down in your notebook or wherever you're keeping your notes. If it's in your head, write it in your head. If there's a word that you can put to the stretch, Write that word down, even if it doesn't make any sense to you, right? Because feelings are, um, you know, the feelings that we get when we stretch are more like reflex, uh, reflexes. Like when you touch a hot stove and you pull it off, like your mind doesn't think, hold my hand off the stove. It thinks hot, right? It thinks like danger, right? It doesn't, doesn't really even put words to it. It's just like, ouch, right? So if you can find the word that your body is trying to put to that, to that stretch, then you'll know what the response is. You'll know what the reflex is. So like in my glutes, my body was saying, this feels like biting on a metal fork. That's not exactly a great thing. It's something that you would try to avoid, right? So that tells me that like, okay, I need to problem solve that one. Got it? Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope so. All right. Now, for those of you who are watching after the fact, or if you're watching this like on a playback, you probably want to fast forward so that you can actually contribute to the chat. Because if you type in like, um, like if you type in something into the comment field after class, then I'm not going to see it during class to help you out. Okay? So you can just like fast forward. It's okay. You can always come back and check these stretches out later. All right? So wrap a rope or a towel around your right foot and kick straight down towards your glutes. And then use your arms to pull you up. Whether you use one arm or two, it's up to you. You could use both. But the thing is, is that the angle here is straight up and down. You're not angling your knee open to the side or across your body. It's just straight up and down. And you should feel your hamstring here in the back. See if you can assign a word to this as to how it feels for you. If it feels good, you're fine. Keep doing it. If it doesn't feel good, let me know and we will problem solve. 
Down for strength and up for stretch. I just want to check something really quick. I have a tendency sometimes to um, forget to turn the sound on, and I don't want to do that. So <laughs> I was like, oh crap, I better check that. All right. So we do about 10 repetitions of each stretch. You can do as many as you want, and then switch sides when you feel like you're ready to switch, okay? All right. Now, wrap this strap around your left leg. Hold it in your left hand, or maybe with both hands, but make sure that your knee is pointing straight in towards your body. Kick down for strength, and pull up for stretch. And again, if this stretch isn't good for you, or if you need a variation, or if something just doesn't quite feel right, let me know, write it in the chat, because I am here to help you. That's why class is live. Also so that I'll actually do it, because you know, or I don't spend too much time editing, uploading. It's, you know, YouTube seems like it's not that big of a deal, but it, it takes a long time to make videos. So the live videos are nice because I can just turn it on and do it. Oh, so you should feel your hamstring right down the back here. Check in with yourself to see how that feels. Awesome. So again, about six to 10, make sure you're resisting the whole time. Make sure you're moving the whole time. You don't have to try to like strain to pull yourself into the stretch. You just go as far as your body naturally wants to go. Notice that as I get up into the stretch, I'm not like, I'm not doing this like, like trying to pull it further. No, don't do that. Go to where your body says stop and then kick back down, okay? What that does is it reinforces your stability in that range of motion. It reinforces how much you can do where your body is safe in space and allows your body to work in its best way, best possible way, right? Okay, now I'm going to go back to the original pigeon pose, reverse pigeon that we were working on earlier. Now, if you want to do this laying on your back like we were doing before, feel free. But I'm going to show you guys how to do this in a chair because I think it's very beneficial. It's a really good stretch move. And... I almost just knocked everything off the table. These pants pick up every fuzz. Even from that towel, there are pieces of the towel now on my pants. Uh, <laughs> so this is also beneficial because you, um, you could do this like on a park bench. If you're a runner and you don't want to like get on your back to do pigeon pose or you know to stretch out your IT band area, you can do this like on a park bench. It's so easy. So what you're going to do is bring your right leg on top of your knee Push with your right leg down into your left leg like you're trying to kick down, all right? Um, you guys, stay with your right leg. I'm going to switch sides so that it's mirrored. I just realized I, I used my actual right leg. So your right leg here, pushing straight down like you're trying to kick down to the floor. Got it? From here, sit up real tall. Feel your sit bones on the chair. And take your left leg and just point your toe so you lift your heel up. There's a fight between the two legs. Use your left, I use your right leg to push you back down and then use your left leg to push you up. You should feel that one here. Take note of what you've got. Make sure your toes can wiggle, that you're not like locked into your foot. A lot of times people will do like yoga toes, they'll lock in. That's a really common thing in pigeon pose in a yoga class because when you do a passive stretch, you need to really protect your knee. When you're doing a resistance stretch, the knee is already protected. So in a, a passive stretch, they would have you contract your foot to contract all of these muscles. So you're basically ending up kind of like in a resistance stretch, but like from the wrong place. If you push, like you're trying to push your leg down like this, it's going to activate the glute, and that's what you want. Now, if you want a deeper stretch in this, when you're on your toe, when you're pushing up, you can lean forward and get a deeper stretch. All right, and then just go back and forth. So you come back up. You can lean into the stretch. You feel that through your hip here. And if you want to take this a step further, once you get up on your tippy toes, start to just wiggle to, from the right to the left. And you'll find a little bit of a different stretch here. If you lean forward, it's even better. All right, now let's switch sides. So bring your left leg up over top of your right knee. You're going to try to push your left leg down towards the floor, like you're trying to bring your foot to the ground. And then from here, 
Lean forward just a little so you're really on your sit bones. Push your toe up of your right foot and then use your left leg to push you back down. Now if you want, you can lean into this stretch. That's nice, right? And you just go down and up. Up for strength, down. Oh, I'm sorry, up is your stretch. Find this stretch and then push down. This is a strength training move. So there's a fight between your right, um, your right leg here and your left leg, okay? There's a fight between the two. Very active spider crawling all around the ceiling. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not so much the actual spider that scares me, but I'm really sensitive to spider bites. And that's what, like, I'll get like a, like a welt that lasts for a long time. They scar, like I have one on my arm that's like a scar still. You can still see the teeth marks. Is that creepy? So creepy. Anyway, spiders. All right, enough of that. Enough of those spiders. Enough of that stretch. Now, we're going to go into a stretch now for the top of your shoulders. So have a seat in a way that feels really good to you. I have a better idea. Let's work on our forearms. Let's do that. This kind of gets into the same muscle group. It's kind of in the same bucket of stretches. So come onto your hands and knees. Bring your hands down to the mat with your fingers pointing towards you. Your elbows will be bent a bit, so it looks like this from the front. Okay, it looks like this from the side. I got my weight on my legs, so I'm not really putting a lot of weight down into my hands, but you do want to get resistance in your forearms, these extensors in your arms, by trying to push your fingers open, okay? So find a place here that you feel okay. If this doesn't feel good to you, don't do it. You could try like bending your elbows more, that usually takes some of the pressure off, like being really down, with the, like really bent. Now from here, push your fingers into the ground. You're gonna lift up, lift up from like your whole torso, like you're, you lift up with your legs, lifting your shoulders up. And as you come up, you can follow through and rotate your elbows. This is kind of weird at first. If you've never done this before, you might need to just do one arm at a time. You might even need to just kind of gently guide like that. And you just go up and down, shifting around. Awesome. Hopefully that feels good to you. If it doesn't, don't do it, okay? Or just move in smaller ranges. So it might be enough just for you to do like this motion. That might be okay for you. Okay, you always wanna work in the range that feels good. Now we're gonna flip it. We're gonna work on our forearms. So we worked on the extensors on the top. Now we're gonna work on the other side. These are the muscles that pull your fingers and your wrists down towards you like this way. We just worked on the ones that pull you up this way, okay? So what you'll do is bring your hands onto the mat so that your fingers are facing your knees. Push your fingers into the ground like you're trying to throw your hands this way. Like you're trying to be like, ah, this mat. <laughs> you're at a table and you're like, I'm done with this dinner. Who plays Monopoly this way, right? <laughs> I always lost at Monopoly. It's a horrible game in my family. My sister always won. She's now a gazillionaire. And I'm not. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just, you know. Anyway, so now push your fingers into the mat and lean back. Finding the stretch in the front of your arms, right through here. And then just shift your weight forward. And you just go back and forth just like that. Just in the range that feels good to you. Don't do anything that doesn't feel good. And just go back and forth. It's like your whole body's like, but I want to throw the Monopoly board across the room. And then you're like, no, don't do it. But I want to, but no, don't do it. Don't. <sighs> All right, back and forth. Whew. If you want to add a little extra bonus to the stretch, this one's awesome. Grab a finger. Just pick up your, pick up your right hand, like I'm here. Pick up your right hand. Grab your index finger of your left hand and just give it a little gentle pull. It's already resisting, so you don't have to think about it. Just give it a little pull. Your third finger, it's your middle finger. 
Your fourth finger is connected by a tendon, so it's best to lift your three and four at the same time, your middle finger and your ring finger, to get that stretch. And then your pinky be gentle with. Just a nice little lift, but don't do anything crazy with that one. It's a gentle one. Okay, and then you switch to the other side. I like to go across like I'm reading, so I start with my pinky. A nice gentle stretch. Stretch your three and four at the same time. Ooh. Stretch your three by itself. Good. I don't typically do anything with my thumbs because it's a little bit of a different joint, so you can just kind of leave it alone. Now, after doing those wrist stretches, you might feel some tension in your wrists, so just shake them out, just roll them a bit. That pain will go away in just a second, okay, if you're feeling any pain. Now, the next stretch we're going to go into is downward dog stretch. This is sort of like, so, well, it's a stretch for your chest and shoulders here because you're going to pull your head through your arms like this. Um, it's also a stretch for your calves. So you can decide whether you want to focus more on your chest, which would mean you don't put your heels all the way on the floor when you do downward dog, or you can focus more on your calves, which means you just go up and down. Who's here? Oh, it's Pat, hi! <laughs> you can't even get your hands in that position. So, okay, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit then, just so that you can experience the stretch in a different way, because I am certain you are not the only person. And I'm assuming you're talking about this one, right? Yeah, that's, um, that's a toughie. So what you'll do instead is bring your hands together like this, push your fingertips together. It's like you're trying to make a ball with your hands. And then from here, all you wanna do is really think about pushing your hands together. Just bring your wrists down towards the floor. And you just go like this. That should be a pretty good stretch for you. And you just go back and forth. So when your elbows are closer together, it'll be easier. When you bring your elbows apart, it'll be harder. You can go forward and back like this if that feels different. Just kind of find it might feel better to bring your fingers towards your sternum and come open back and forth. But just find the range where you're like, oh, that feels natural. That feels good. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here, Pat. I hope you're doing well. Um, to get the fingers in this one, you can also pull your wrists away from each other so that you're just stretching your fingers. I hope you can see that okay from here. It's a pretty good one. So you just kind of open them up this way. The resistance happens because you're trying to push your finger. It's almost like you're trying to push them apart like this, okay? All right, hopefully that helps. So you can stick in that one for a while and then we'll go into this downward dog stretch. So your hands are on the floor, your feet are on the floor, you're on your knees, I tuck my toes under. Now what I want you to do is just really focus on the back and forth motion from a kneeling position. So you can use your hands to push you back, and then you can use your legs to push you forward. And you can see how active my upper body and my lower body is in this stretch right now, right? We're going to do that same motion, but with straight legs. So now you just come up to where your legs are straight. Notice I have not put my heels on the ground yet, okay? I'm going to push up onto my toes as high as I can go, and then I'm going to use my arms to push me down, bringing my head through. This stretches my chest. If you want to extend the stretch to your heels, you can push your heels all the way down. So come up for strength. Bring your head over your hands. Start with a chest stretch, so you just push your hands back and try to push your head towards your feet until you feel a little bit of stretch in the front of your shoulders. And then use your arms again to just let your heels down. It's kind of like you unlock your ankles to let that happen, but there's still resistance. Forward for strength. Find your chest stretch. And then down. Up on your toes, bringing your head back through. And you just go back and forth. This feels good to me today. You can find the best way to do this for you. So don't worry about it if you don't get all the different stages and steps. If you're just going back and forth, even if you want to stay on your knees to do the stretch, that would be okay. Or you could do this against the wall or the chair by just putting your pants on the wall and bending your hips to pull your head through. So you have that option also. Up for strength and down for stretch. 
just like that. All right. Good one. It's a good one. Okay, I'm going to work a little bit of rotator cuff today. Uh, sometimes we do this stretch this way, which you're welcome to do if you know the stretch. But I'm going to show you a little bit of a different one. It's a little more complicated, but it's good. So bring your right arm up and take your left arm over top. So you're going to grab your elbow with your left hand. Your right hand's going to push up into your elbow. So your arms aren't crossed over. But they're like stacked on top of each other. So one arm pushes down, the other arm pushes up. One arm, pull, they both try to pull apart, okay? So pull open towards the right side of your body and then pull to the left side. Now notice that I'm keeping my torso stable. I'm not twisting at my waist. I'm moving from my shoulders. You might move a little bit. You might move a lot. It's up to you, right? You choose. But if you, if you were looking at me from above, it would look like this. They're going back and forth. Everything's moving from my shoulder joints, okay? Now, if you want to add some internal rotation on this one, what you're going to do is try to pull up with your elbow while you, or pull up with your hand and push down with your elbow so it'll look like this. So you want your left arm to end up looking like a swan neck, okay? So you just bring the neck down towards the swan body. The head comes up. You should feel this in the back of your shoulder on the left side. Now again, if this doesn't feel good, work in a smaller range of motion, okay? If it really doesn't feel good, let me know. Write it down in your little notebook, if you have one, so you can keep track of what you've got going on. If you can put a word to the stretch, what would it be? Think about it. This stretch feels like rainbows and unicorns to me today. It's a rainbow unicorn stretch. Oh, so it's just back and forth. We call it the figure eight stretch. So you're kind of like turning your, your elbows, kind of following this figure eight line. Okay. And just back and forth. And then we'll do the other side. So bring your left arm up, take your right arm over top and grab the outside of your elbow with your right hand. So your left hand is pushing into your elbow on the bottom. So they're stacked like pancakes. You can push open to the left and then pull across to the right. This is gonna give you a stretch in the back of your shoulder on the left side. And then if you wanna add a little bit of internal rotation into the stretch, make your left, oh, this is the right, make your right arm into like a swan neck and pull it into that position. And you just go back and forth. This one feels hot to me. A little burn in that one. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, it doesn't feel the same kind of range of motion as the other side either. So that's really fascinating. It's a, it's a fun thing. You learn a little bit more about your body every day, right? Every time you come to class, learn a little bit more. Whew. And just like a figure eight, you go back and forth. Now, you guys notice when we do the arm stretches, I tend to sit cross-legged or on my knees, but a lot of these stretches you could do standing up or you could do sitting in a chair. Okay, so feel free to adapt in the way that feels good to you. Got it? It's important. All right. All right. Let's get back into our glutes just a little bit. So, you're going to lay on your side. I'm laying on my left side. It doesn't matter which side you're on. Bring your knees up in front of you so that your hips are bent at 90 degrees. Your knees are also going to be bent 90 degrees. That means that your shins here are parallel to your torso, not behind your body. So your feet aren't in line with your spine. Your feet are in front of you, okay? Put your hand on top of your knee, and you're going to resist by trying to push down with your arm while you push up with your leg. And you're just going to go back and forth like this. So you push up for strength and you push down for your stretch. You should start to feel a, like a good burn in your glute muscle, like right here in your butt on the top leg. If you don't feel that, or if anything feels wrong, let me know, okay? Put it in the chat. If you are watching this recorded, you can put it in the description box also, because I do check those, or not the description, in the comment fields. I do check those, and I will write, you know, I'll write your response, or, um, you can also always check in with me about doing an online class. I do that through Zoom. 
And uh, it's not a class, it's like a one-on-one -on -one session. So you can check in with me about that too. Oh. All right, so up for strength and then down for stretch. I like to stretch my leg out a little bit to go to a straight leg. That gives me a little bit of a deeper stretch too. It's kind of lovely. All right, and then let's switch sides. So go ahead and flip over. All right. So again, you're on your side. I like to put my head up like this, but you don't have to. You can actually put your head down if you want. Bring your knees up so that you're 90 degrees at your hips and that you're also 90 degrees at your knees. And you're gonna put your hand on top of your knee. Now, just take a double check. Are your feet in front of you? Is your shin bone here, this one? Is it in line, like, is it parallel to your torso? So it should be like on this front part of your mat, right? My feet are actually off the mat. That gets you the right angle to get this glute in the right way. So push up for strength, and then use your arm to push you back down. You'll get a stretch through your glutes on this one, okay? So up for strength, and down for your stretch. Finding that burn in your glute. It should start about into the third or fourth repetition. You'll start to feel that burn. Once you really feel the burn, you can start to straighten your leg out a bit if you want to get that extra stretch. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very slowly, at the same speed as I'm pushing down, try to reach my heel forward. Whew, that's more intense, right? Yowza. Yowza. Up for strength. And as you come down, this is your stretch. Feel that glute. It should be right here on the top. This is so good. Glute activation. Oh, it's so good for you. The reason it's so good is because when you walk, your glutes are the thing that makes sure that your knees stay stable. When you don't have active glutes, then there's no protection. Your knees kind of cave in when you walk, and then that puts strain and ache on your knees. So who wants healthy knees? Me, everybody, I think, I'll tell you, I mean, I think like one of the most important things as we get older is to make sure that our knees are capable of, of moving us around, right? So this one's huge. Giving, keeping your glutes activated is like the secret to good mobility, I'm telling you guys. For like ages, so important until you're like a gazillion years old. I hope, right? Let's hope for that. Okay, now next I want to get into quads. I think, do quads at the wall. Yeah, let's do that. If any of you have problems with this quad stretch on the wall, let me know in the chat. I'll give you another option, or maybe we'll problem solve through this and do it in two different ways. So if this stretch doesn't feel good to you, skip it, and we'll come back to it in a different way later, okay? So take your towel or your mat or, you know, some sort of cushion, and put it on the wall, like against the wall, like this. And then you're gonna come up to the wall on all fours, face away from the wall, and take your right leg and put your knee on the towel with your foot up against the wall. Now, if this is already angry for you, then don't do this stretch. You maybe just watch, or like go get a drink of water, or whatever, okay? From here, you're gonna bring your other leg around to the front, so you're just gonna sweep it around and then come up into a lunge, okay? From here, you should be able to make a straight line from your knee to your hips to your shoulders. If you find that you can't lift your shoulders up, like if you feel like you have to be down, it's because your fascia is too tight through the stretch. It's coming all the way up into your torso, right? This is a, a fascia line that's like the skin on top of your muscles, and it goes from the bottom to the top. So if that's the case, we have to take the load off a little bit. So you bring your knee away from the wall, and then your shoulders can come up. Okay, so you find the place that feels the best for you. I'm going to bring my back again because I like this stretch and I need it today. So what you're going to do is push with your back leg into the wall like you're trying to straighten your leg out. That's going to drive your body forward. And then use your front leg to push you back. There's your stretch. Both legs are pushing out at the same time. So you keep that resistance the whole time. If you feel like you're going to fall over, if you feel really unstable, hold something, like get a chair something you can hold on to, that's okay. If you feel knee pain, if you feel cramping, your foot's cramping, you can get out of this stretch. This feels uncomfortable on your foot, put something under it. A shirt, a towel, you can, um, you know, wear a sock for this one if that feels better. 
Just find a way to make that stretch feel good to you. And if it doesn't feel good, like if you can't make it feel good with a little simple fix, like an extra padding under your knee or something, then it means that there's a problem, okay? I had a client once, she was a student of mine, and she was working on um, her husband, I think, and they spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get him to do the stretch in a way that felt comfortable. She was like, we had every exercise ball, padding, padding under his foot, padding under, we had things we to hold on to, we tried everything. And I was like, did you try problem solving? And she was like, oh no, should I have? <laughs> if it takes you more than 30 seconds to get comfortable in a stretch, then that's not your stretch today, okay? All right, let's switch sides. Let's switch the sides. All right, so down onto both hands again, all fours. You're going to take your left leg this time and drop it on the towel with your foot against the wall, and then swing your right leg around to the front. Now, again, if that's hard for you to do, you're too close to the wall. Bring your foot away from, the, or bring your knee away from the wall a little bit more, okay? And then you come up into a lunge. Woo, push both legs into the wall. Well, this leg into the wall, push the other one forward. So they're pushing in opposite directions. So you come into this strength training move here. It's like you're trying to straighten your back leg out. And then you push back into the stretch to find the stretch through your quad in the front of your leg. It's okay to move in small ranges of motion, but if you're having trouble moving at all, you're still just too close to the wall. Don't feel like you need to have your knee against the wall. That will come over time, okay? Trust me on that one. And then again, if you're having any cramping, any problems, with your hamstrings, with your foot, with your knee, don't do the stretch. We're gonna come back to a different version later, okay? So you can skip it. You can take this time to just relax, you know, look at the skeleton. All of Suri's twist ties are around his feet. I don't know if you can see them. She's asleep. She's been sleeping a lot the past couple days. Ah, back and forth, forward for strength, and back into your stretch. And just go back and forth, okay? Oh, it's a good one. I needed this one. It's lovely. Okay, now bring your hands down and your legs down, and you can come out of the stretch. Now, I want to do a stretch for your hamstrings again. Why don't you grab your chair? And let's see. Let's put this chair. Just like on the side of the mat, I'm just gonna adjust the camera a bit so that you can see my face, just in case. And what you're gonna do is put your foot against the corner of the chair that's furthest away from you. So it's kind of like up to the side. And you're gonna face straight forward. So you're not facing to the chair, you're facing perpendicular to the chair. Push with your heel down into the chair so it's like you're trying to drag the chair over towards you, like you're trying to pull it towards your other heel. Hopefully it's stable enough to hold you up. If it's not, find another way to do this, okay? Then find that resistance in your inner thigh and hamstring here. You're gonna fold forward. It's a nice stretch right for here, right through the front of this hamstring. And then you're gonna push with that leg to pull you back up. Okay, so you use the force of your legs to bring you back up. Leaning into the stretch. And then up again. Now, of course, you want to make sure that your knees feel really stable. So if you're feeling a lot of tension behind your knee here, you might need to just do a little bend in your knee to protect yourself, okay? And then you use your leg to push you back up. Make sure that you're resisting the whole time. That's nice. That is a nice stretch. I'll tell you guys, it's hot in here. I need to figure out the air conditioning situation in my home. I'm usually not here this much. <laughs> it's usually, by the time I get home, it's like nighttime. So it's pretty rare that I'm here like in the heat of the day. It's already hot and it's only 9 a.m. Up for strength and down for stretch. Coming forward into the stretch. Oh, it's lovely. And then back up. All right, let's do one more and then we'll switch sides. So if you want to just turn the other way so you don't have to move your chair, you can just flip around or you can move the chair to the other side of your mat. Just make sure that you're sitting or you're standing about at the place where like, you know your chair has four corners, right? 
Now I'm standing in line with the two legs of the chair that are on, on the back side, like towards this wall. I'm standing in line with those. Then I'm gonna put my foot on the corner of the chair that's further away from me. So that I'm actually like on a diagonal here, like straight out to the side, okay? But my body is facing straight forward. I'm gonna push into the chair. This is gonna pull me down, right? So it's gonna activate that hamstring. And then I'm just gonna lean forward. So you lean into the stretch, keep the resistance by trying to push your heel down. If you need a little micro bend in your knee, that would be all right. Find that stretch in the inner hamstring here and push back up. And if you don't feel that, just skip it, right? Or find a way that this stretch feels good to you, okay? If you feel it on the outer part of your hamstring, then you have some compensation patterns. So we'll work on that muscle next, okay? Just give it a second. Up for strength and then down for your stretch. Good, so good, so good, you guys. Oh. It's so funny. Earlier, I'm sitting here thinking, like, it's been a tough week. I should take a vacation. I should take the time off. And then I do this every time I do stretching. I'm like, oh, I feel so good. I feel so good when I stretch. It really does change my day. I don't know about you guys, but I love it. I love how I feel after. But sometimes that moment before, you guys, I love stretching, I do. But there's like, you know, I was putting my mascara on today and I was like, oh man, going to work. I think it's like that for everybody though, right? But once I get to it, I love it, it's so good. I could stay in the stretch all day long. Have we done 10? We probably have. Let's switch. So now we're gonna go into a stretch for your lateral hamstring, leave your chair right where it is. Face it this time so that your body is facing square onto the chair. You're right in the middle of it, right? Then you take your right leg and bring it up to the chair so that your leg is right in the middle of the chair. And then shift it even more to the left. So you're just going to kind of like see how far your leg will go over to the left side of the chair, even though your body's still square on. Okay, what this does is it puts your leg instead of from here, it goes across like this. Okay, so we want that. It's called adduction, pulling in. We talked about this before with the adductors, your inner thighs that you're squeezing together. So you're pulling your leg into adduction, which means it's coming across your body to the midline of your body and even past it. Okay, then we want a little internal rotation also. So that means take your toes and instead of having them point up like this or even out like this. See if you can have them turn to the left. A little extra. Oh, I feel it already. Now, resist by pushing your leg down into the chair, like you're trying to bring it back to standing. That will engage this outside hamstring because of the angle that you're on. You're adducted across your body. You're internally rotated, so your toes go to the left. And then you just lean forward. And you push back up. If you feel unstable in this, then take your foot a little bit less to the left, like let it be a little bit more in the mid, middle of the chair, okay? You just go up and down. So up for strength, and then bend at your hips, come into the stretch, okay? And you just go back and forth. The internal rotation can be pretty subtle. Like it still almost looks like my toes are pointing up, but there's an intention that they're pointing to the left. Okay, so you can try that, see how that feels for you. But don't worry too much if you're like, I can't turn my toes anymore. Like it's pretty subtle. All right, let's do one more. And then we'll switch sides. So come back to standing. Take your left leg and bring it up to the middle of your chair and then slide it over to the right corner. So that gets you your adduction and then internally rotate. So turn your toes to the right and then push into the chair like you're trying to kick back down to standing. And then from here, just lean forward and find that stretch in the outside of your hamstring. Push up for strength. If you feel wobbly, uncomfortable, like you're gonna fall over, it would be okay to hold on to something else, like a chair or be close to the wall so you can hold the wall. But also, 
listen to your body because your body is trying to tell you when you get real wobbly that maybe you've gone too far, okay? It's not as like scream at you like you would feel if you had pain or like a cramp or something, but that feeling of your body, there you go. The feeling of your body wanting to fall over is basically it's telling you, hey, this is a no-go. You're going too far. So up for strength and then bend over into your stretch. Find that stretch on the outside of your leg here. And just go back and forth. Good work, friends. Good job. Good job being here today. It's a great way to start your Saturday, right? All right, okay, get rid of your chair. Just throw it across the room. You don't need it. You don't need it anymore. All right, let's have a seat. Get a drink of water if you have some. It's good for you. That was a lot of water. Okay. Bring your feet together. We're going to go into our butterfly position. Let me readjust the camera again. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay, feet together like a butterfly. And you're going to put your elbows on your knees and then push down and squeeze open with your arms while you push up with your legs. So you're squeezing in and then you push open. And you should feel your inner thigh stretch right through here in the groin area. And then just go back and forth. In for strength and up for stretch. All right, stick with that. Let me see what you got here. Oh no, Pat, you feel it in everything we do, like in every single thing. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. What you want to pay attention to, especially, is if there is anything, like any move that we do at all where you don't feel pain. That's the stretch that you want to do the most of if that makes sense. And I know that's hard because people are like, oh, I feel this, I should probably do it more. But the stretch that feels good is the one that's getting the relief. It's the piece that's blocked, right? So in any of the stretches, I would say move in a small range of motion, especially so that you don't end up aggravating that spot anymore. So move in very small ranges of motion into a place where you don't feel it. And then when you do find the stretch that feels good, do a handful of those. Okay, and when you find it, let me know and I'll direct you into the next stretch. Just going up and down with your torso, like in this butterfly stretch specific, or like this back and forth, up and down in your hamstring. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. In that case, um, it's okay, those hamstring stretches are done, right? Uh, we can actually go back. Did you feel it in medial hamstring and lateral hamstring? In both hamstring stretches? Because that would make a difference too. Sorry, there's a little bit of a delay on this. That's why it's giving me a second to respond. This stretch too, if it's bothering you on your back, you could do this on the wall. Like this, laying on your back here. So you come in for strength and open for stretch like this. That would take off some of the pressure on your torso. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, Pat. Stick with that. It's possible that if the butterfly stretch is okay, that you could go back to those hamstring stretches and see how they feel. But also, um, you are set up to do one-on-one -on -one sessions still. So we could meet over Skype and we could do a little bit of like really individual work to see if we can fix whatever's happening here or at least get some more information. 
So let me know if that's something you want to do, okay? Uh, you can contact me separate, all right? Okay, let's go back into a stretch for our quads. And this one, come back onto your back, bring your left leg off your mat, and hook your right leg on top of your knee. And then you're gonna resist like you're trying to pull both legs apart. Use your right leg to pull you towards the floor. And as you do that, you should feel a stretch through the outside here. Be careful not to twist in your back in this one, but um, let your hips stay down. So sometimes it helps me, I just, with my hands here, I hold my waist and pay attention to that moment when I feel like I want my waist to turn. Like if my, if my torso comes out of my left hand, then I've gone too far. So you just go up and down, and as soon as you start to feel your body start to twist, then stop, okay? So up for strength and down for stretch and just see how that feels, okay? Up and down, good stuff. And then switch sides. So bring your right leg out to the side, hook your knee, or your hook your left leg over top of your knee and resist like you're pulling both legs apart. Pull with your left leg down while your right leg resists to get that stretch in the outside of your right hip. Make sure that your torso doesn't turn over. Okay, so your hips stay grounded. That's what makes sure that we get this stretch in your leg. If you let your torso twist or let your hip come off the ground, then you're going to get a stretch through your back that might not be beneficial. Okay, we want to make sure that we get this in your legs. That will give you balance. All right, now after this stretch, lay on your back, bring your right leg up and grab your heel with your right hand, let your knee open to the side. You'll kick down for strength and then pull up for your stretch. It's a diagonal pull to the right. This is similar to one of the stretches we did on the chair, so I'm curious to see if this one feels better uh, than it did on the chair. If you want, you could go back to the chair stretches if you remember them. Or just get a little extra hamstring left this way. Down for strength and up for stretch. We'll just do a few. And then switch sides. So bring your left leg up, grab your heel with your left hand, let your knee open to the side, kick down for strength and up for stretch. See if you can find that stretch in your hamstrings a little bit more. Down for strength and up for stretch. See how that feels for you. And then we'll try our lateral hamstring as well. Now this one, you might want to use your rope or your towel so that you can get a little bit more distance on this one. So what you do for this one is lay on your back, wrap the rope around your right foot and hold it in your left hand. Let your knee come in as close as it wants to go and then try to turn your knee internal towards your elbow so that your leg will be on the same diagonal as your left hand. That might be tricky, but just do your best, okay? Kick down for strength, and as you pull up, it's a feeling of pulling towards your left ear. It's a little over your head and to the left, but this force is really like an up and down force. So I'm kicking down with my leg and I'm pulling up with my arm. It just happens to be on a diagonal because of the rotation. So just, you know, do what feels right to you, okay? If this feels really confusing, if it doesn't feel good, then let me know. Or write it down in your own notes, right? All right, now let's try the other side. So your left leg, wrap the strap around your left leg, hold it in your right hand, turn your knee in towards your right shoulder or your right elbow so that you end up with an internal rotation. Kick down for strength and pull up for stretch. Find the stretch on the outside of your left hamstring. It's crossing over your body towards your right ear, but think more up and down. Don't think right to left because that's gonna change the stretch for you. All right, just check in. Just check it. You guys are doing great. You are doing a fantastic job. All right, so now, I get more talent on these pants. It's like they're a magnet. 
I should actually just cut these pants up and use them to sweep the floor. They would pick up everything. I could just like put them in the middle of the room and they'd just be like, Whoa, all of the cat hair. It's amazing. The gap. The gap should just sell slippers instead of pants. All right. So now let's go into a stretch for your chest. Mm. Cross that lats. What I want you to do is bring your oh gosh, I'm thinking about this for you, Pat, because I know your knees. Okay, so sit on a on a chair, sit on your heels, sit in a way that feels good to you. Um, only sit this way if it feels okay for your knees. You could also sit like this, that'd be okay. Um, just find the way that feels the best to you, okay? Even cross-legged, whatever. Bring your left arm up so that your hand just kind of hovers behind your spine. Like it's like, just bring it to a place where it feels good. I'm not actively trying to pull my elbow over my head. I just have my elbow pointing up in a way that feels safe. Then grab it with your other hand, and you're gonna to try to pull both arms apart so you really activate your lats on the side here. Now use your left arm to pull you gently over your left knee. It's just a little bit forward and to the side. See if you can find that happy twist in the side of your body here. Now Pat, I'm curious because you pulled something, if this feels good or what you feel. If you feel pinching on the top, let me know. As you pull over to the left, you should feel it on the right side. If you feel it on the left side, switch sides, okay? And only move in the range that feels really good and safe to you, okay? Don't do anything that feels uncomfortable or unnatural. You don't have to pull this pain out if you feel pain. Pulling the pain out isn't going to help. If it feels beneficial, you can if it feels productive. But think about what I was saying earlier about, like, what kind of word comes up when you do this stretch, right? If you could think of like, what, what kind of word would be used to describe this? Right, once you know what that word is, then you can decide, okay, is that a good word or a bad word? Like, what's my body telling me to do, right? Sometimes it's like a butterflies and unicorns kind of word, and sometimes it's like a metal fork kind of word. Like if you're fighting a metal fork doing a stretch, then like it's a no-go, okay? Now let's try the other side too. So bring your left arm up. I'm sorry. Bring your, yeah, bring your left arm up. Grab your elbow with your right hand. Resist like you're trying to pull both arms apart and pull towards your right knee this time. And see how that feels. Gather information and let me know if you notice anything good or bad. So up for strength and then you pull into your stretch, okay? And you just go back and forth. Pay attention to what's good for you, okay? Doesn't have to be extreme. It doesn't have to go too far. It may be that you need to go back and forth from one side to the other to find some balance. So feel free to do that if you notice that the side, the side that you're stretching is the side that gets really long as you pull your elbow towards your knee. If you feel it on the other side where you're pinching over, then you just need to stretch that side instead. They're working as a team. They're trying to keep your spine stable. So just figure out what works best for you, okay? Could mean going back and forth a bit. And that would be all right, okay? All right, let's see where we're at. I'm gonna make sure that we don't run out of time. Oh yeah, it's 10 o'clock. Okay, so now, real quick before we end today, I wanna to go back to our reverse pigeon because you should feel a lot more activation there now. So go ahead and lay on your back. Bring your right leg up on top of your left knee. Grab your leg behind with both hands. Push with your right leg away from you and then pull in for your stretch and see if you can find a better stretch. Oh yeah, I can feel a better stretch there. It's no longer like biting on a metal fork, that's for sure. Oh, what a relief. What a relief it is. And so you just go back and forth. Find the stretch in a way that really makes you happy. And then if we want to go into the full pose, there's a little quad action too by trying to pull your leg in towards your butt. That can be a little more intense. All right, now let your left leg come over top. Reach through and grab your right leg with both hands. Push out with your left leg and pull in for stretch. And just go back and forth like that, out and in. See how that stretch feels. It's a lot better for me. 
I don't know about you guys. I hope it's awesome. And then when you're ready, if you want to, you can try bringing your heel towards your butt, hold your shin on top, and try it there. It's a little different. A little different, right? Whew, it's a little more intense. Oh my gosh, there's a spider again. I can't believe that spider stayed so tame through class. That's amazing. Because, you know, I wish for sure it was going to drop right on my head. It did not. All right. Good job, Spider, for bringing it all full circle. Okay, my friends. I hope you're doing awesome. I hope you guys feel good. I hope we answered some questions today. Like I said before, feel free to reach out. Feel free to ask in the comments if you have any questions about anything that we were doing today or anything else you want to work on. Um, even if you have an issue that you want me to focus on in class in another day, let me know because, you know, I'm here for you every day except Sunday, which is when I rest. All right, um, real quick before I go, I would love for some support from you guys. So if you would like to support this channel, there are a couple ways you can do it. Here they are. You can subscribe. You can give a contribution for class. Uh, the channel is totally run on donations, so feel free to leave a little bit if you want. There's a link in the description box below. Um, share this with your friends. If you have anybody that always has trouble with glute activation or like IT band pain, especially if you have like a running team that you work with, give this to them, share it with them. It's so helpful. Give me a thumbs up. That is super easy to do. But the important thing about the thumbs up that, um, that I don't think people understand when you like this, then YouTube says, if she liked this, then other people that are like her also will like it or like him. Right? So if, I mean, you guys are awesome. I want more people like you here. And so by just giving a thumbs up, it makes sure that that happens. Okay. And then the last thing, of course, is to comment, which um, you guys are doing. Oh, and Pat, let me tell you. So the daily classes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m., Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 9 a.m. That's the general, that's the general one. Now, like I was saying before, I keep thinking that maybe I should take a few days off and just, you know, have my summer. So um, if that happens, I'll put up a video anyway. It'll just be a different, like a pre-recorded kind of video, maybe not a class, but more of a like lesson thing. So I'll make sure that there's something for you guys every day at those times, regardless of whether it's me live or not. Uh, but that's the plan, okay? I'll say it again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 a.m., that's central time. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 9 a.m. Central. Okay? All right, friends. I hope you're great. I will see you all again soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.